Toy Tractor Times is at the 2018 St. Louis Farm Toy Show with Garrick Mouch, who has taken first place in the 164 scale division. Congratulations. And also Eric Hazelhort from Kansas, who uh, is known for Rock and H Farm Toys. And um, guys, what can you tell us about this display? We kind of wanted to replicate corn silage harvest in southwest Kansas at the dairies. Um, you know, dairies are real particular about the forage quality. When they say it's time to go, you go 100 mile an hour because it needs out of the field so they can get moving. And so we just got three different fields and a pit just to kind of replicate as best we could the chaos of harvest. Yeah, it uh, looks very chaotic but very cool, yeah. so we're looking forward to yours. Or organized chaos, I think right. is the best way to put it. And Eric, uh, what, did you, what role did you play in the display? Well, last year at the show, uh, Garrett and I, we said we wanted to make a display like something we've seen out in our country. And, you know, with just a ton of iron on it, and that's exactly what we've done. We created. So uh, my responsibility in part of this was helping plant corn, plant the stalks, uh, all the custom decals or the things I put on, um, and then help Garrett assemble machinery. Um, just it was a team effort. It worked out really well. Looks good. Well, let's take a tour and you tell me about what's going on. <laughs> um, first up, we have a field that's freshly harvested. A few uh, kernels still standing in the field, you know. That volunteer corn, you can never get it all between the rows. Sure. Um, what what the concept is is double cropping. I mean, they want something growing year round to maximize the irrigation water. You know, we're we're desert climate out there, so everything has to be irrigated for crop production such as this. I mean, there's dry land, wheat, milo, stuff like that. But if you want high yields, this is what you got to do with irrigation. So what we have here, like I said, it's just harvested. Uh, manure is being hauled to the field and spread. They will get that on as quickly as possible with all the spreaders. Disc rippers are sitting here waiting to go. As soon as they're done ripping it, they'll come in more than likely with a VT and drill the wheat and get the sprinkler running. It's a couple day turnaround from harvest to crop in the ground. Now are they going to harvest the wheat for grain or are they uh, chop silage. it? Silage, okay. Because what it, they'll chop it early, you know, with wheat you chop it right before beard stage. Okay. And high protein, high moisture, really digestive, and it's off early enough you can get in a long season corn to get 20 plus ton corn on it again. Okay. Um, and when we replicated with the truck, it's a belt, an all-look belt trailer, 3D printed, it's one of my designs. Um, the dairy itself, they never have anything to do with the harvest and the actual farming, it's all custom done. But what the dairy has is a fleet of belt trailers. Okay. All, all spring and fall, they haul manure out to the field, mm -hmm. go to one of their silage stockpiles, load up with silage, take it back to the dairy. Now when you say silage stockpile, what does that mean versus uh, they, the bunker they don't, on our farm? They don't pile everything at the dairy itself. Uh, one dairy near me, they've mm -hmm. got piles as far away as 70 miles from the dairy. Okay. Just because in order to get the crops, you know, everyone's competing, you got to go farther and farther. So what they do is they set up remote locations. A lot of them they'll pour a pad or they'll just put it on the ground. They set up a permanent scale, a little shack with the scale uh, display in there and all winter long. They're hauling manure to the fields, hauling silage back. And that way the truck has something both ways, sure. you know, they're not deadheading and doing nothing. So that's that's what the two belt trailers on the display represent is the dairy side of it. Okay. And then uh, tell me about the tractors. Got a lot of track tractors out here. Yeah, so the, is this part of the custom chopping crew, all one operation? Yeah, or it's all farmers? part of, they're all labeled uh, with MCF farm logos, which okay. it's just mock custom farms. It's a, it's another farm I kind of came up with to go along with mock farms. Okay. Uh, the uh, tractors on the spreaders are all 335 RTs, uh, narrow tracks set up on 30 inch spacings. Um, they they do the dry manure in the fall, liquid manure or liquid fertilizer. They handle all the all the nitrogen side of it. And then the two big guys over here are 360 RTs pulling seven shank disc rippers. And they've got the big wide tracks on for yep, the tillage. For, yeah, for the tillage. Everything has a rock box. In our area, it's not for rocks. It's for chunks of concrete coming in the manure. Okay. Because it's, it's one of the bad sides of manure. I mean, you've got 
cattle feedlots and sure. dairy barns, you're going to have. That's got to be good for the food. the beaters on the spreader. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So what are these Artex spreaders or the what brand of spreader? Coon. Coon. Okay. Yeah. The heavy that's, industrial Coon Knight one then. Yeah. Yep. That's, Very nice. We got a local dealer that sells them, so that's what I decided to model after because it was real easy for me to get good accurate measurements on it. So we've got the Zematic um, irrigation leg coming out here. Yeah. We had to cut off the center pivot and then basically cut off half of this span just for space-wise. Used a piece of aluminum pipe to bond them together. Okay. And then uh, we got the Blue Jet um, tracker to yeah. eliminate I mean, the it's ruts always, left of it. Tracks can get out of control if you don't mess with them, so a lot of times you try and hit them once a year to sure. just clean them up a little bit. Makes it easier for the spreader and the rippers. Oh, uh, what model 8R is that on? Uh, that is a 260R. Okay. So we got the, the spreading and the plowing, getting ready for the wheat. And uh, do they just spread the wheat on and then VT it in or do they no, drill they'll, it? They'll drill it in. Okay. They'll VT and then run a drill, usually seven and a half inch spacing. Okay. So now we get to the fun side of it. Chopping is probably one of the most exciting things to watch. It's really popular on YouTube. I know my friend yeah. Mike Les is always filming those big choppers and put yeah. them on his channel. Um, uh, so just looking at the real pictures here, I mean, that that's impressive. Uh, we've got a friend who runs one of those choppers that's actually freezing harvesting out of Inman, Kansas. Okay. They do a lot of chopping in southwestern Kansas. Uh, he was generous enough, Chris Bradstreet was generous enough to give me some pictures to help show people, you know, this is what this, it is. This is what it really is. I mean, it's it's this chaotic in the field. It's moving a lot of silage. Yeah. Um, so we've got, how many choppers in total are, I know we've got two here and then another board. Yeah, we've got two running here and two on the other board. And one sitting right down at the pit needs some new knives. And that's always, when I'm filming for big tractor power, I'm like, wow, there's going to be five or six. And then, oh, yeah. well, this breaks and that breaks. and. Yeah, I mean, we run two in real life, and if we have both of them running for a couple days at a time, it's kind of a miracle. Sure. So what model uh, <laughs> choppers do we have out here? Uh, they are both 7950s, um, full detail kit done by myself. Uh, the spouts are James Goodyear's 3D printed. Um, but the railings, the inoculant tank, the auto view, mirrors, spout rest, rear bumper, it's all in my detailing kit I'm working on. And oh, nice. then Here's standy tires with uh, more steering axle. 7950 number two. 80, and, uh, 7980. 780, all right, 7980. But it got the two decal and 10 row camper. Yep, that's right. my 3D design as well. And then this is the Mock Farms crew. All the trucks are labeled okay. as Mock Farms. Um, they've cool. all got the bumper guard and the safety pole hitch. Okay, Kenworth? Yep. And what kind of trailer is that? That is a 38 foot JBS trailer. It's by far the most popular out in our area. Um, the real nice thing is you don't fill them all the way full and they're still gonna weigh in the mid 90,000. Mm. So it's gonna be a 30 ton load. Give or take. And I imagine for the ground it looks a little sandy, so it's yeah, uh, got the sandy, safety toe. Yeah, sandy, sandy ground in southwest Kansas. So I notice you got number 51 on this, uh, so that's a lot of tractors. And uh, what model tractor is that? That is an 8285R. Okay. <coughs> so it's kind of neat. You got open up the field, getting around the yeah, irrigation. I mean, the, the first thing they'll do is just open up around the sprinkler, bring in a VT behind to smooth up the ends for for turning. And then you just start punching holes and going. And then they'll zip that off once they get the pivot moved to yes. into a free space. Yeah, that's that's the last thing. So basically, as this guy starts coming around right now, which his end would be right here, mm -hmm. as soon as he gets clear a hundred yards, that pivot will be moving. Okay. So by the time he gets around, it's out of the way to where they can just come right through. Very cool, and you got the detail of it cutting through the the corn there. Pivot tracks. Yeah. Yeah, left, got the spacing for the pivot tracks. Cool. One thing I really liked is how you've got the um, the turning, you know, it really looks like that turned up soil. And, uh, you know, you've got the little bit of spray over. What did you use? Uh, you know, we could see the spray over silage there. What, what did you use to create the silage texture? Uh, Woodland Scenics, I believe that one is Earth Blend. Okay. Just, it seemed to have enough the color variations in it to look like fresh cut sure. corn silage. 
Well, let's um, take a look at the next segment of the display on this side. So we move over from the two choppers on that segment, and then uh, we can see there's some more working on this side. And again, you've got the pictures of the real machines chopping, and you, know, you can see that it's just a massive operation. That's a lot of feed coming down there. So what's happening here? So this is this is one of the mock custom farms crews. Uh, it's got the MCF logos on all the trucks and choppers. Okay. Um, what we have here is basically they just made the initial passes through the middle. You got the VT tilling under the stocks to get it nice and smooth for them. Uh, one chopper punched the hole around, and then they're taking off around the outside. So uh, did it kind of come up the middle here and yeah, come so around? Yeah. So basically, that's an, if when you pull into a field as an empty truck, your first thing is you go find a chopper mm -hmm. and just start following him. Okay. So he was following this guy through the opening and just waiting on the full trucks to clear so he can go through. Okay. Um, the guy punching on the outside, when trucks start to get close to full, you just tell him to slide over a little bit, get another truck up beside him. You don't even stop. You just push the button to move the spout over and keep going. A lot of corners. Farmers do not want you driving on them, especially in southwest Kansas. Mm -hmm. Sandy ground, if you break that crust, it will start to blow back. So, I mean, that's one. Of, that's why I really printed this picture sure. to show you do not drive on a corner unless you are allowed to. So that's so, what these guys are doing. They're so you might look and say, hey, you got all this wide open area. Why do you waste your time driving yeah. back there? But here we blow, can see the... It is blue. It's almost like beach sand if you don't know what blue sand is. I mean, yeah. it, it is light. A little breeze makes a big, big problem really fast. No, it's like clay sand you're bad at Home Depot or something. Yeah. Yeah, I've seen that. Uh, I was filming some cotton harvesters for Big Tractor Power in Blue uh, Hill of Missouri, and it was like standing out on the beach where they didn't have the cotton raised. Yeah. I mean, it could have probably made a sandcastle. Yeah. yeah. So, like the manure pile, they'll usually do that one spot every mm -hmm. couple of miles. So, they just have one corner that they have to worry about. Sure. And that way they don't have. And a lot of times, what they'll do is as they're leaving, the spreaders will go across it and spread on really heavy. Okay. Get that manure on there to help cancel it. And because of the irrigation, if you're not putting water, you're not going to have grass or any vegetation yeah. growing on that. So um, the VT, I mean, that's pretty neat. You know, coming through, you look at, like, gosh, why well, they got to land all out there when they're chopping. Yeah. What, um, how, how many feet wide is that land all? That is all? a 23-foot model okay. built by Adam. Ferrix? Ferrix, yeah. yeah. I can never remember how to say his last name. Um, he's letting me use it on here. Uh, 27, no, 29 foot model is what we use in real life okay. behind it. The nice thing about it is, as compared to a disc, it doesn't bring up big chunks mm -hmm. and it doesn't leave the ground real soft. The packer, uh, the roller packer behind it, packs that ground down quite a bit. So when the trucks come out, they're not tearing deep ruts. Because if you got a truck tearing up deep ruts, there's almost no point in doing the disc because it's going to be really rough. The whole purpose of that is to smooth it up save sure. abuse on all the equipment. Yeah. What Model 8R is uh, running on the front there? That is another 8285R. Okay. And that one is number 53. Very nice. We get... You know, it's a nice detail. When you're running yep. this much equipment, you're going to number it so you know where, what you're servicing. And again, I, I like how you've got the the area that yeah, they punched out and sprayed a little any, over the any top. Anytime you punch a hole, it's, it's always a guessing game that first couple of feet trying to get it lined up just right. Kind of consider it a good day whenever you hit it on the first try. So we've got trucks rolling in and out of this field, uh, choppers filling it up, and once that truck is full, it's going to head to the bunk. So I'm guessing we might start over here where the scales are, coming yeah. in and weighing. Yeah, every every loaded truck obviously comes across scale weighed. We've got the table and the chair in there. If there's a guy running the scale, a lot of times the truckers just kind of weigh themselves. You just run in there, punch a ticket, and off you go. And this is kind of that remote outpost kind of look, yeah. I guess, where they I get mean, the... You're either going to have a steel container or mm -hmm. one of the wooden shacks you can buy at, like, Home Depot. Okay. They usually just set the end. I mean, it's permanent. I mean, they'll just leave that there all year sure. round. Um, then we got a truck leaving empty. Uh, you weigh empty two to three times a day, usually, because there's not a whole lot of need to weigh empty every single load because it's going to change so minutely. And so this is the mock Customs coming in and out, dumping yep. the silage of the bunker, and then you've got the farm truck that probably delivered manure yep. over there. Yeah, and now manure, they're now he's getting loaded up, up with uh, last year's silage to head back to the dairy. The dairies out there have told me they want their silage to ferment for a full year before they touch it. And then what they'll do is they've got two different 
uh, crews that come in and mess with the tarp because everything's tarped and put mm -hmm. tires on. One crew will come by and tear off a strip of tires, and then as soon as he gets back, the next guys come through and tear off a strip of tarp. Um, they're just kind of in a rotation between different pits and different berries. Okay. So when they come back around, then the next set of tires will come off. And so is this haylage here with the green? Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah, that's last year's haylage. And then, of course, another big part of chopping is all these big tractors pushing on the bunk. Yeah. In our area, I mean, tractors, I mean, you can see it in the, the picture didn't turn out very good. But you just get a bunch of tractors on there, as much weight as possible. And in our area, they just kind of go in a circle, so that way they're never stopping, they're never shifting. Not backing you up. save the clutch, you save, you save everything. And they just kind of follow each other around, and between the pass, they move an entire load of silage. Um, somebody asked me why the top of the pit was so flat. The guy that uh, custom packs for us in real life uses his GPS to do elevations, asks the feedlot and the dairies how high they want it, he gets to that height and they shave it off. Mm. And you can see the green star right there on the roof. And that guides it. Grouser blades. Yep, grouser blades from Two Scale Fab. So we got a couple generations of 9Rs and 96, maybe 9630, I'm guessing. 9630s, yep. Okay. I mean, it's not, I mean, it's not uncommon to also have like an 8870 on the pile with no blade just following around for extra weight. Sure. So 9630, and then uh, looks like another, another 9630, and then and these are 9560Rs. Okay. Then um, of course you always you're always going to have a little spillage over the edges. I mean over here you got corn growing up along the edge from a year ago. Hey, that's a good detail. You definitely see that. You've always got a few weeds popping up around the scale. I mean you can't you can't keep everything perfectly clean. Farming is not perfect, and dairy farming there's not time to make things perfect. Yeah. You just got to go. Oh, well, Eric, congratulations, and the guys, you did a great job, Eric. Thanks. It's, uh, Thanks. Your talents we were, are we were really proud well of how this kind of represent. came together. Sure. Well, thanks for the big tour. This is awesome to see, and uh, we'll look forward to uh, seeing what you might develop next. Well, we, got one, right. we got an idea, but I think it might be a couple of years. All right. Sounds good. Thanks a lot. Congratulations. Thank you. Good to see you. Yep.